So as I said earlier, we're going to have about seven vocabulary words and all those vocabulary words I am going to be able to label in a picture. Uh, so what I'm going to start off with is the picture and then we'll kind of talk about what is the vocabulary word and then where is it found in the picture. The comments are not parallel lines. Yes, they're not parallel lines yet. <laughs> and I'm going to label my angles. Ooh. I'm going to change this around just because that's what the book does, and I don't want to. They label things funny. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is the picture that we're going to be judging off of. Those numbers are measures of angles. So this is angle one, angle two, angle three, angle four, angle five, six, seven, and then angle eight. So the first word we're going to talk about is our transversal. So the definition of a transversal is when you have a line that intersects two or more coplanar lines at different points, AKA a line is going through two lines. As soon as you have that happen, that line that is intersecting the two or more lines, that line is our transversal. Due to that transversal, we're then gonna have relationships. So in my diagram, this line right here is my transversal. So it's that line that is cutting through my other two lines. And as a result, I have a transversal. They are coplanar, assuming the smart board is my plane that we're drawing on that two dimensional surface. All three of these lines are on top of the smart board. So they're all coplanar on the same plane. And that transversal is cutting through those two other lines. So now that we have that transversal, we now have some angle relationships. The first relationship we'll talk about are our interior angles. So if I were to look at my picture, and if I were to make an assumption as to which angles would be considered interior, interior being inside, so kind of the ones that are being contained by my lines and my transversal. And what we're going to consider being the interior 
is anything that is between the two lines that have been intersected by that transversal. So I'm gonna change mine to a crayon and anything inside this region here is going to be an interior angle. So I'll rewrite these so we can see them. So write the three, the four, the six, and the five. So everything in green is considered an interior angle. So for a definition, so I'm gonna say any angle contained between the two lines intersected by the transversal. So any angle that is contained between those two lines is considered an interior angle. So our interior angles are in angles three, angle four, angle five, and angle six. exterior angles. So again, if I have the two lines, if we were to look in between the two lines, those are all interior. So exterior is everything outside the two lines that are in intersected by the transversal. So be very similar to my definition above. We have an announcement. Or not, it's just beeping at us. Question is, when we have a fire drill, I don't know, they don't let us know, but I would think soon, because we have to have a certain number per quarter. So exterior angles, any angle outside the two lines intersected by the transversal. So that means that one, two, seven, and eight are going to be our exterior angles. We'll do those in blue.
So angles one, two, seven, and eight are our exterior angles. And so now that we established our transversal, our two other lines and then the angles that are being formed because of that transversal, we're now gonna have a little bit more uh, specific terminology. We're gonna talk about alternate interior angles and corresponding interior angles and things like that. So consecutive interior angles. So the consecutive part is going to mean on the same side of the transversal. The fact that it's interior, we're only gonna be talking about interior angles. So I wanna look for interior angles that are on the same side of the transversal. And so I'll write that out just as one clean statement. I'm just gonna say that consecutive interior angles are interior angles located on the same side of the transversal. And so I'm gonna go back to my picture and say, all right, which of those angles would be both consecutive and interior? And so the fact that they're interior means I'm only talking about my green angles. So three, four, five, and six and on the same side of the transversal. So with the transversal, we have the left side and I'm gonna have the right side. As soon as I cross over that transversal, I'm going to a different side. So it doesn't matter if this transversal is horizontal or vertical, as soon as you cross the transversal, you're on the other side. So which angles would be considered consecutive interior angles? Well, four and five are both interior angles and they're both on the left side of the transversal. So that would make four and five being consecutive interior angles. Three and six are also consecutive interior angles. Three and five are not consecutive interior angles because I had to go across the transversal. So angles four and five and three and six. Mm -hmm. So angles four and five or angles three and six would be our consecutive interior angles. alternate interior angles. Alternate being on the opposite side.
of the transversal. So again, we're referring to the interior angles and now the opposite or the alternate would be when you do have to cross the transversal. So these are interior angles on opposite sides. of the transversal. Another thing about alternate interior angles is that they are non-adjacent. Non-adjacent means not next to each other. So not only do they have to be interior and on opposite sides of the transversal, but they also cannot be right next to each other, meaning they cannot share a ray or a side. So from my picture, which ones are interior? Again, three, four, five, and six are our interior angles. Ones that are on opposite sides. So four and three are on opposite sides of the transversal. Five and six are on opposite sides of the transversal four and six are on opposite sides of the transversal and three and five are on opposite sides of the transversal. The second part is that the angles cannot be next to each other. They are non-adjacent. So three and four are adjacent to each other. They're next to each other. So therefore three and four cannot be adjacent interior or alternate interior angles because they are adjacent. Five and six cannot be alternating interior angles either because they're next to each other as well. So that leaves me with four and six. Four and six are both interior. They're on opposite sides of the transversal and they're not right next to each other. So four and six are going to be alternate interior angles. And then three and five are also alternate interior angles. All right, so next up, alternate exterior angles. So now we're keeping with the word alternate, but now we're switching from interior or exterior. So these are gonna be the same restrictions that alternate interior angles have. Uh, alternate being that they're on different sides of the transversal and also that they are non-adjacent. That's not how you spell angles. So 
So exterior angles on opposite sides of the transversal and are non-adjacent. So one's on the left, one's on the right, and they cannot be next to each other. Request for a mass break. Yeah, we will in a little bit. So looking at this picture, the exterior angles are in blue. So one, two, seven, and eight. On opposite sides. So one and two are on opposite sides. Seven and eight are on opposite sides. One and seven are on opposite sides. And two and eight are on opposite sides. Now the ones that are non-adjacent, one and two and seven and eight are both considered adjacent to each other because they share that side. So therefore the only two pairs of alternate exterior angles are going to be one and seven and two and eight. So one and seven and two and eight. All right, the last general transversal relationship angle pair that we have is going to be corresponding angles. Yep. So corresponding angles, they lie on the same side of the transversal and on the same sides of our lines that are being intersected. So look at the picture before we write a definition. So they have to be on the same side of the transversal. So I have one and four, five and eight, they're on the left side of the transversal. They have two, three, six, and seven. They are on the right side of the transversal. So that separates between left and right. So the first part of corresponding angles is that they have to be on the same side of the transversal. The second part is that they have to be on the same side of their corresponding line. So I have line one and line two. So if I wanna look at this first line, being on top or below would be on one side of the line or the other. So angle one is on the left side of the transversal and on top of the line that's being intersected. Now going down to this line here, which angle is on the same side of the transversal and on the same side of that line that's being intersected by the transversal? So if one was on the left and on top, which angle is on the left and on top, that would have to be angle five. So therefore angle one and angle five are corresponding angles. If I take a look at number angle four, that is on the left of the transversal and it is below the line. So looking at this other line, what's on the left and what's below, it would be angle eight. So angle four and angle eight are gonna be corresponding angles. Angle two is on the right side of the transversal and above the line. So angle six is on the right side and above the line. So angle two and angle six are corresponding angles. And lastly, angle three and angle seven will be corresponding because they're both on the right and they're both below their lines. 
So now to write this in words. So corresponding angles are going to be on the same side of the transversal and found on the same side of each line. So I'm on the left and top, or I'm on the right and bottom, same side of the transversal and the same side of the lines that are being intersected. So angles on the same side of the transversal and on the same side of the lines being intersected. So examples of corresponding angles, again, one and five. <laughs> no, that's okay. Cause we'll go nice and slow. I get a few steps in, you know, just walking back and forth. Angles four and eight. Angles two and six. And then angles three and seven. So those are all of the corresponding angles. And we'll end today with just one activity. I'm gonna draw a new picture with numbers one through eight, and then just ask you to identify which ones are interior, exterior, alternate interior, alternate exterior, consecutive interior, and corresponding. So as I defined and gave an example of where they're found, I'm just gonna ask you guys to be able to duplicate that as well. All right, give you guys some time. And what I'd like you to do again is just to identify where are or which angles would be alternate interior, which ones would be the exterior. So for example, if you told me that angle one is an exterior angle, you would be correct. But there are three other exterior angles. 
And then there's gonna be a total of four interior angles. And so just going through and then looking up the definitions, I did rotate this on you. So kind of what was left and right of the transversal is now top and bottom. What was top and bottom of the intersecting is now left and right. So it may be advantageous to label a few of the sides if you want, just to kind of get that picture. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and mute myself. I'm also gonna pause the recording. And then in a few moments we can go over this and then we'll be doing a mass break. And again, no homework for today. All right, so let's start to go over these answers and then we're gonna take people outside for a mass break. Uh, so for number one, the interior angles, what you're gonna find is that interior will be here and exterior will be out there. Because again, it's what's contained inside by those lines that are being intersected. Uh, so all interior angles would be angles four, five, and six. All exterior would be one, two, seven, and eight. So now that we establish those first two, a consecutive interior angle. So that means it's on the same side of the transversal and then obviously being interior. So four and five are on the same side of that transversal. They're both above and they're both interior. And then three and six are on the same side of the transversal and interior. Alternate interior angles, they would have to be interior. They would have to be on opposite sides of the transversal and they can't be next to each other. So three and four are on opposite sides of the transversal, but they are next to each other. So that means that they cannot be alternating interior angles. However, four and six can be alternating interior because they're on the opposite sides and they're not next to each other. Three and five are also alternate interior angles. Alt exterior, again, they're on the outside. They're on opposite sides of the transversal and they can't be next to each other. So one and seven and two and eight are the two pairs of alternate exterior angles. And lastly, corresponding angles are on the same side of the transversal and on the same side of the respective lines. So in this case, the transversal, you're gonna have angles on the top and angles on the bottom. And then with the intersecting lines, you have on the left and angles on the right. So which angles are on the top of the transversal and to the left of the lines? That would be one and five. Angles that are on top of the transversal and to the right of the lines would be four and eight. Angles that are below the transversal and to the left of the lines would be two and six. And angles that are below the transversal and to the right of the lines would be three and seven. Tomorrow, we're gonna talk about these same relationships but what happens when we have parallel lines are the two lines that are being intersected. When we have the parallel lines, we still have our consecutive interior and alternating interior and exterior angles and corresponding angles and all that stuff, but we're gonna have a certain relationship with those angles. You guys are gonna like that math because what you're gonna find is that there's only gonna be two possible answers. It's either gonna be one degree or the other. And so it makes it pretty simple with the guessing is that if it's not one, it's gonna be the other. And what's also nice is that one of the angles is gonna be less than 90 degrees and one's gonna be bigger than 90 degrees. So it's pretty easy to see which one's the acute and which one's the obtuse angle. But that's what we'll do for tomorrow. And then tomorrow we'll have an assignment that we can start in class and then that will be a graded assignment. Uh, people should have access to power school now. So you'll see your updated grade for the last two weeks of school. Um, again, that was the last week of quarter three and the first week of quarter four. So that makes your quarter four grade, which will be averaged with your quarter three grade. And then obviously 10% of your grade will be the final. So that will be the project that we have at the end that will slowly be building up into that point. And then the last 5% of your grade is that reflection that you guys will be doing at the end of the year of what great thing have you learned from this class, no matter what you write, you get full credit. So yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, stop the recording.